All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending today. We have a few more people coming in, but I think we should get going. Um, so let me put my video on. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. So uh, I'm Rafael, a membership manager at Bon Sucro. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, we're talking today about Bon Sucro's uh, new strategy for the next five years, changing for good. So very exciting. Uh, before we do, just a few uh, housekeeping uh, rules. So this session is being uh, recorded. You might have seen a notification about that. So those sessions will be made publicly available afterwards. Uh, we will share the slides as well with you. Uh, if you have any questions or any technical issues, you can use the chat. We will have a Q&A as well at the end. So if you have questions, as we're going through it, please make sure to write them down on the Q&A so you don't forget and you have a chance to uh, uh, ask Danielle. All right, so I'll hand over now to our CEO, Danielle Morley. She'll take you through uh, the, the slides. Danielle, over to you. Thanks, Raphael. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. I uh, hope everybody's well this Monday. <clears throat> um, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, to hear about the new Bon Sucre strategy 2021 to 2026, which we're calling Changing for Good. Uh, we've set out our agenda for change to deliver um, more value to our members and stakeholders and to make a bigger impact with sustainable sugarcane. And our new strategic plan, it's built on our many achievements to date, but of course we've also reflected on our lessons learned um, I'm going to spend the next 30 to 40 minutes taking you through some of the key highlights and then we will have time at the end for any questions you might have. So in terms of how did we develop our strategy, um, it wasn't a top-down process. We developed this strategy very collaboratively and iteratively. Uh, we took inputs from many members from a variety of different stakeholders uh, we worked closely with the Secretariat staff, we consulted with our Members Council, we engaged our Technical Advisory Board, the Bon Sucro Board of Directors were very engaged throughout the whole process, um, and we were supported by a small team of consultancies from um, a company called Change Agency. It took us many months to get to the end, um, and lots of virtual meetings um, to get it right, and I believe we now have a strategic plan that we can be proud of and I'm, I'm delighted to present it to you today and uh, really look forward to, um, to getting your feedback. We'll also be sending out to all participants um, a mailing with a link where you can download the strategic plan in its long form or its shorter form in a number of different languages uh, and it is already uploaded onto our website um, and available. So um, I'll start at the beginning with a summary of our baseline analysis that we did um, at the outset of the development of this strategic plan. Um, so by March 2021, um, we, we can see that Bon Sucro has made real progress over the last strategy period. We've grown our membership, um, we've strengthened our systems, we've achieved many of our goals, and we can be proud that um, Almost 5% of all uh, land that's, that's grown under sugarcane is now certified Bon Sucre. Um, we do have global reach now. We can say we're a global organization. We have um, members in many different countries and we have certified mills in 19 countries, including the largest sugarcane origins um, in the Americas and Asia Pacific, as well as a growing pool of committed buyers representing at least 20% of global sugar, um, the global demand for sugar, as well as making really good inroads into some of the newer market sectors as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And this reach provides a really solid foundation for Bon Sucro to go further and address some of the complex systemic issues that um, certification alone will not solve. Um, on the environmental side, we have a range of environmental impacts. I've just highlighted a few on this slide for you, where we can see that uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission reductions um, go down significantly um, over the first four years of certification. 
uh, the average reduction is 31% at farm level and 20% at mill level. And we can see there's also continuing reductions of water consumption and improvements in water efficiency, uh, continuing reductions in, in, in other inputs such as fertilizers and herbicide use over the term of, of certification. Um, and we shared a couple of years ago a scientific um, paper which indicated that the global adoption, if the whole world adopted bon sucro sugarcane, um, it would halve greenhouse gas emissions uh, from sugarcane production and it would reduce water use by 65% and nutrient loading by 34%. So you can see that the bon sucro standard and the certification has a really significant role to play in um, improving the environmental impact of sugarcane production. And we have the baseline metrics to prove that. And on the social side, um, we now have our code of conduct, which commits all of our members, um, not only the certified members, but all of our members to respect human rights. And we've strengthened our due diligence procedures around that um, and put in place the annual reporting, um, uh, annual reporting process. Um, then on the certification side, again, just some example indicators here, we can see that Bon Sucre certification does lead to an increase in wages paid and global average is for the lowest paid workers, the global average post certification is 21% above legal minimum. And we also have really good data to show the improved improvements that are made in, for the health and safety of workers. And then on the production and uptake side, um, there's been good increase in uh, volumes of certified sugarcane um, on the market with a commensurate increase in the scale of the impacts achieved. Um, Brazil does still dominate on the production start side, um, although we have certified mills in 19 countries, Brazil uh, still accounts for two thirds of certified sugar produced. Um, and our certified buyers are buying more certified product than ever before. And those volumes, those absolute volumes have also gone up, but the rate of supply and demand still remains at around 20%. Um, and we want to help try and bring that up to create more value for our members and particularly for, for those producers and try and increase that, that rate of uh, supply and demand up from 20%. Um, then we looked at uh, the positioning of, of um, Bon Sucre. Where do we sit um, in the world of sustainability, um, sugarcane sustainability? Um, and we are, um, you know, it's very clear that we're the only sugarcane sustainability initiative that combines a number of um, what we think are very material characteristics. We have an exclusive focus on sugarcane. We're, we're definitely experts in the area with all of our members, experts in the area of sugarcane, and that provides a really value add. Um, we have the credibility of being ICL code compliant. Uh, we have a very credible um, standard system uh, of assurance and claims and certification, um, and that's monitored by our compliance with ICL. We have a focus on continuous improvement that's embedded into the standard, but also in everything else that we do. We now have this global reach with local presence, with our members, but also with our teams, our staff uh, across the origins. And I'll, I'll speak about our ambitions to grow those regional teams as well. We're multi-stakeholder. This is really important to us. Uh, and again, it's uh, very much part of our USP, the fact that we have multi-stakeholder membership across the value chain and multi a multi-stakeholder governance structure. And we've now, we're now playing this broader role uh, as a platform for change beyond certification. And then finally, uh, on our baseline analysis, we, we did research into the global context um, and the material trends that would be impacting Bon Sucre over the strategy period over the next five years. And as we all know, uh, we're situated right now within a very dynamic and urgent global context where uh, government and society are collectively failing to um, make sufficient progress on the global goals for sustainable development and on climate change. This is the decisive decade of action, uh, particularly on some of the very pressing issues around uh, the climate emergency. And thankfully, uh, despite the disruption of COVID, 
um, we can see that the global drive for more sustainable uh, supply chains continues across all the key commodities and uh, definitely in our sectors, in the food, drink, fuels and packaging sectors where we're working. Uh, we also know that financing sustainable growth and the transition to decarbonized and climate resilient economies will be a growing overarching theme for investors um, over the strategy period. Uh, Pre-pandemic, approximately 1.3 trillion was invested in sustainable development um, and um, the UN predicts that that will continue post-pandemic and those investment flows will continue, although even at 1.3 trillion, it's still woefully short of the financing gap that's needed to, to meet those global goals and uh, on the climate. And then meeting at least minimum safeguards on human rights and social standards will become increasingly important for the private sector. Uh, for the first time, ESG issues are moving beyond reputation and uh, supply chain resilience risks for businesses and particularly for, um, for end users to becoming core financial and legal compliance risks with the emergence of regula new regulatory regimes and new policy frameworks, most notably the EU Green Deal, which is currently being finalized uh, and which will have an impact on supply chains um, way beyond the European borders. And we also looked at the production and consumption data uh, in the sugar markets, the ethanol markets, and we dug into the biofuels, bioplastic and biomaterial market trends. Uh, and while yes, sugar will continue to account for 75% of the end use of sugarcane, we do expect uh, to see considerable growth in its use as a biofuel and in plastics and packaging. And so we took all of that information, all of that baseline analysis, um, the desk-based research, as well as the consultations and the discussions with, with stakeholders. Um, and we derived the key insights for, for the Bon Sucre strategic plan to make sure that we remain uh, relevant and purposeful within these current and emerging trends and global contexts um, and that we we're able to deliver value to all of our members and all of our very diverse uh, membership and to build an adaptable uh, and resilient and data-driven organization um, that meets the needs of the future. So that was some highlights from our, our baseline analysis. So we took that, to, we put all that together and we and we conceptualized it um, and I'll now introduce you into our overarching strategic framework and then I'll dive into some more details on, on what each of those means. So you can see um, this wheel, we call it our strategy wheel, um, at the heart of which is our newly defined purpose, um, Bon Sucro's purpose to collectively accelerate the sustainable production and uses of sugarcane. So you can see in our purpose statement, we've been very clear that we're working across the whole value chain, the production and uses of sugarcane. Um, we've put right up front to work collectively, and you'll see as I go through the strategy, how um, that's reflected in our strategic priorities. Um, and of course, we want to accelerate with, as, I, as, as we've spoken about, we're living within a very urgent uh, time frame, and we want to accelerate the sustainable impact of, um, of sugarcane. So that's our purpose statement. And around that, we have defined three strategic aims, which align to the three pillars of sustainable development and we'll define how we'll contribute to the sustainable development goals. And those three strategic aims um, to improve the environmental impact of sugarcane, to strengthen human rights and decent work, and to create value across the supply chain. Those three strategic aims are interdependent and non-hierarchical and they're mutually uh, supportive. And then for each strategic aim, we've set ourselves some high level objectives supported by targets and indicators. Um, and then implementation is going to be designed around the five strategic priorities, which are in the light blue um, and delivered through six activity work streams, which are in green in the circle. And they will be underpinned by four core principles in orange. And I'm going to take you through each of those um, concentric circles. Um, so 
we have defined four core principles for bon sucro. Um, this is new, bon sucro hasn't sort of defined its principles previously. Uh, we now have these four principles of collaboration, inclusivity, credibility and adaptability to guide our operational decision making and prioritization. I think they sort of speak for themselves. Obviously collaboration is central to our identity as a multi-stakeholder initiative and to the way we work as a secretariat. We, we aim to work very collaboratively with our members and as well as with each other. Um, we want to be um, to focus on inclusivity. We need to be inclusive to drive sector transformation uh, beyond certification via, for example, new strategic partnerships, and also to build more inclusive and diverse sustainable supply chains. So making sure we're in integrating smallholder farmers as well continuously and, and, and other communities um, and have a more inclusive bon sucre. And credibility is fundamental to the way we govern and operate our standard system. I mentioned previously, we are code compliant with ICL. They have a set of credibility principles, but we have credibility that, that lives and breathes beyond that as well. Um, um, as a SME, a small and medium enterprise, Bon Sucro, um, adaptability is part of our organizational DNA. We're constantly uh, adapting to, uh, to change and to learning and to growing, and we strive to continuously improve and be resilient. So those are our four core principles. Now coming on to the three strategic aims, the first one I'm sharing here is to create value in the supply chain. Um, we'll create value um, for mills and farms across the sugarcane supply chain, um, buyers and end users, as well as others with a stake in making the sector more sustainable. So we've been more, we've been more explicit that we also want to be inclusive and engage other stakeholders such as governments, uh, financial institutions and civil society. Now we know that certification um, delivers an array of benefits. I've mentioned a few of those impacts at the beginning of the presentation, but we also know from our research and our, um, for example, we've done some business case studies recently into the return on investment of certification, one in Brazil and one in India. And we also know anecdotally from speaking to all of our members and having worked in this space for a number of years that the rigor and cost of certification uh, does remain a barrier. It remains a barrier for, for many mills and farms and particularly for smallholders. And while there's a growing commitment from buyers, uh, there's still too little uptake for, um, for certification to generate a return on investment for all the different types of certified producers. And we, we want to try and address that. And once, although, yeah, we want to try and address that. So coming back also to the creating value, we've been very clear one of the um, one of the aims here is that Bon Sucro certification does enable our members to reduce the, the business risks, the legal risks, and the reputational risks, and to keep pace with these new market regulatory uh, investor and consumer demands. Um, so we've defined uh, four key objectives to increase the supply and demand of certified sustainable sugar, ethanol, and derivatives to create a more inclusive and sustainable uh, value chain, to convene impact and innovation projects, and to deliver value to our members. Um, they're supported by a number of high level targets, um, which I won't go into right now. You can, you can review those if you have a chance to look at the, the whole plan. Uh, the second of our strategic aims to improve the environmental impact of sugarcane. So we know that environmental issues are a high priority for our members and partners, many of whom have specific commitments to reducing negative impacts or improving uh, through regenerative agriculture, water replenishment and so on. Uh, and to meet, we also considered that in order to meet the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, where as we know, the agricultural sector has a very important role to play to meet those GHG reduction targets, um, all sectors, including our sector, the sugarcane sector, needs to play its role and to take responsibility. And we want to support the sector to, to have a key role, you know, we want to support the sector to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so part of our objectives within the improved environmental impact, one, to drive uh, climate action in the sugarcane sector, 
two, to improve water security and water stewardship, and three, to improve biodiversity and soil health. Um, we'll do this through partnering with others, um, through working collectively and convening the sector uh, to convene around um, commitments and actions uh, to address these uh, key objectives. And I'll talk a little bit more detail about those later. And again, we've set some high level targets to monitor our progress towards those objectives. And then thirdly, the third strategic aim, strengthen hum human rights and decent work. Um, so as I mentioned, we know that there's a growing spotlight on social and labor conditions uh, in global supply chains and for corporate due diligence. We also know that much of the sugarcane is grown in countries with less than optimal agricultural working conditions and that the Bon Sucre standard provides a framework for producers to improve and certification enables members to reduce risk um, and to keep pace with these demands and, and demonstrate due diligence. Um, so our objectives, uh, we want to drive decent work and the safer uh, working conditions for farmers and for workers, including a zero tolerance on forced labor and child labor to ensure the safe recruitment uh, for migrant workers, to reduce discrimination in all its forms and to promote gender equality. We also want to promote fairer wages for the lowest paid people in farming and milling through piloting living wages in specific origins. And we will do this uh, through collective initiatives, working with willing members and other partners. Um, so those are our high level objectives in this strategic aim. And now moving to our five strategic priorities in the blue, lighter blue circle. Uh, these are our five priorities that we think it's really important that we act upon in order to contribute to those, to those aims. So since standards are our core business and they will remain, you know, one of the, the core business of Bon Sucro, uh, we'll use the next five years to continue to strengthen um, and innovate our system of third party assurance. And um, for example, we're going to take a look at social auditing capabilities in particular. Um, the new production standard will be finalized this year um, and we will then thereafter evolve the smallholder standard uh, in line with the revised Bon Sucre production standard, but adapted to the realities of smallholder farming drawing on lessons, certifying smallholders in a number of origins. Um, we also realize that we can make a bigger impact if we align and benchmark Bon Sucro with other standards, both on the production side, but also importantly, on the market side. And we want to do that, but we want to focus on those bigger strategic partnerships where we can um, have a bigger impact and we will use a risk lens to assess those partnerships where we'll take that forward. For example, we're aligning currently with the Brazilian government's Renova Bio scheme, and we will seek um, new and other opportunities to grow the market for Bon Sucre certification, particularly in the emerging carbon space where we can align our standard with other standards. And finally, we do intend to develop a stepwise approach to certification. This will be seen in the new production standard, but then we're also going to be looking at it more holistically as well um, and incorporate a stepwise approach to Bon Sucro certification over the coming strategy period. Uh, we want to support growers and mills on their sustainable journey at different stages in line with our principles of inclusivity. Um, this is where the stepwise approach um, comes from in terms of our principles to help us scale, and it will also help us scale up sustainable sugarcane production. In recent years, we have been, um, we've started to invest and convene impact projects, and we've had some, some really interesting and innovative and successful projects. And we're going to build up on that experience we've had to date and build that up over the, this strategy period. This fits with our collaborative um, principles, working together in partnerships. Um, we have an ambition to grow fairly significantly 
um, our income being invested in impact and innovation projects. And we're looking to, to raise around $7 million over the strategy period to invest in those projects, um, financed through our income from credit trading, um, but also from additional grants. And we also want to support our members um, technically, um, expand our technical support and facilitate access to metrics, to ESG metrics for the certified members to help facilitate um, access to finance. Um, and we want to work on providing improved analytics and insights from the data that we have. And as part of our commitment to creating value, uh, we'll be looking at building the supply and demand for sustainable sugarcane and derivatives. We'll do this, uh, we're going to prioritize market development um, into looking at new sectors. So for example, the rum sector, the bio-based the bio sectors, the bio-based economies, um, as well as growing in the traditional sugar sector in the big consumer markets of Europe and, and, and North America, but also increasingly looking at um, those bigger consumer markets in middle income countries where we have a foothold, for example, um, in, in Brazil, in India, in South Africa, and perhaps even in China. Uh, we see some really also see good opportunities for us to leverage our impact um, with our metric standard um, and by looking at can bon sucre become an accepted standard for compliance by financial institutions, and we've already started that work, and also by governments. And we've already started that work with the Reneva Bio uh, alignment. Um, we want to develop our Bon Sucro credits further. We want to develop the offer. We have proof of concept now. Our digital trading platform uh, has been successful and we'll be working on improvements over the strategy period and on the promotion of the digital uh, credit trading. Uh, to provide the sellers with the marketplace and the buyers with an easy way to meet responsible sourcing commitments. We want to provide um, stories of change and evidence of impact to help facilitate and incentivize greater uptake of, of the credits. And I've spoken about our ambitions to play a more significant convening role for the sugarcane sector. So we want to build our capabilities to deliver on this um, capitalizing on our leverage as a network, uh, you know, with the influence that our, our members have, um, some 20% of global sugar purchase, some 25% of global uh, sugar production, and building on the knowledge that we have um, so far. So we want to be adding new capabilities, for example, in public policy and influencing and communications, um, together with our technical knowledge to and working with our members to focus on some of these complex and urgent systemic issues where collective action is needed. And working in partnerships, setting targets, implementing action plans, uh, and making and to make progress specifically on climate action, um, as I've mentioned, so we can work with the sector on to meet the Paris Agreement on climate change through defining some science-based targets and em emission reduction pathways on water stewardship and on social and labour conditions, uh, in particular origins, we'll be doing um, you know, national level um, risk-based assessments, um, but specifically looking at heat stress, migrant labour, living wages and gender equality. And then our fifth strategic priority is to promote knowledge, best practice and innovation. This should be underpinning uh, all that we do, and we want to invest more in this priority. Um, we know that members want us to uh, provide new data and insights. We know that we need to strengthen our monitoring and evaluation capabilities and our reporting capabilities so that we can unlock that, um, that value from the data, um, and provide analytics and supply chain mapping and shareable metrics. So when you do have a chance to read our, our strategy, whether it's the short form or the longer form, you'll see there's a section there on making it happen, um, where we drill further down into how we will bring our strategic priorities to life. Um, there's six sort of sub, sub, sub chapters within that short, relatively, yeah, within that chapter, uh, covering certification and assurance, um, impact projects, membership development, market development, digitization and data, 
and communications and influencing, all recognized as important work streams for Bon Sucre in order to meet our priorities, our aims and our objectives. So um, we have the global strategy, we want to make local impact. Um, we'll be retaining our global headquarters in London um, and we will be growing our regional capacity to deliver where it counts in, in those key origins, uh, particularly in Asia Pacific, um, Central America and Brazil. And our work in each of the key origins will be consistent with the priorities, with the aims, and with the making it happen chapters, but of course tailored to optimize the impact at those national and sub-national levels. Um, we've identified some uh, regional national priorities in the plans and more will follow once we've completed our operating planning. Um, we know that we can't spread ourselves too thin. We're not a large organization. We will focus on key origins where we already have a solid foundation and where the risks and opportunities are most material to our strategic aims. But we will also you know, explore other opportunities where they're looking valuable and very promising. For example, in Asia, looking to expand into some, some maybe some new origins um, and so on. So those are all in our regional plans. Um, in terms of our provisional objectives, I know most people on the call today, I think are from the buyers and users category. Um, we've defined some provisional objectives. These will be further elaborated once we've gone through a planning process. Um, but clearly we want to, we've already set out to increase uptake, increase uptake of Bon Sucre certified products um, in the food, alcohol, drinks, uh, bioplastics, um, biopackaging markets. We want to increase our membership in the traditional markets, but also in newer markets. We want to increase uptake of Bon Sucre um, credit trading and marketing. We want to convene these pre-competitive um, collaborations to define commitments, um, collective actions and impact projects. We want to offer buyers greater visibility on impact of your investments with improved monitoring and evaluation and metrics. And we also can offer supply chain mapping to our buyers in order to um, support um, end users in, um, with transparency, with traceability, and with being able to facilitate and target continuous improvements in their supply base. So those are just some examples um, of the objectives for the end buyers category. And in order to reach this pretty ambitious strategic plan, uh, we're currently less than 20 people in Bon Sucre. Our ambition is to uh, at least double the size of the organization uh, by 2026. Um, building much needed new capabilities in our regional teams, um, in our operating systems, data and analytics, in comms, policy and in project funding in order to convene those, those impact projects. And we aim to do all of this through uh, our membership fees, our new partnerships and grants and through credit trading. So in summary, um, we will continue to um, focus exclusively on sugarcane and its value chains. We'll continue to be a membership, multi-stakeholder membership organization and to support our members to, to contribute to the sustainable development goals. We're not going to make any big changes in our governance structure, but we will be working to strengthen and improve our governance. And we'll continue to deliver an internationally recognized credible standard system for sustainable sugarcane. We're going to be strengthening and working harder on creating value for our members and for stakeholders. Uh, we're going to be strengthening a focus on climate change, on water and biodiversity, our contribution to human rights and decent work, our support to smallholders. We're going to be strengthening investments and partnerships, market development, uh, digitization is critical for us to, to grow as an organization and monitoring and evaluation and also strengthening our ability to do influencing and better communications. So thank you. It was a, a whiz through our, our strategy. It's a, quite a comprehensive strategic plan. Thank you for listening. 
as you can see, we really want to make a bigger impact with sustainable sugarcane. We do believe in the future of bond sucrose certification, and we also want to be convening the sector to work on those more complex systemic issues beyond certification. Um, and I, we, we, all the team, me and the team, we invite you on that journey with us. Um, so I'm now available for any Q and A's you might have. If you have them, you just pop them in the Q and A chat box um, on the Zoom. Over Thank you, Daniel. Uh, so yeah, as uh, Daniel said, please send your questions through the the Q and A. I see that we already received one. I'm not sure if everyone can see it. So I'll ask the question and maybe uh, because it's a, a technical, don't, Nicholas, can you reply to it? I know you already did, so <laughs> it might be good. So the question was, does Bon Sucro have a specific goal to make sure certified sugar producers are tracking and improving their own uh, LCAs, uh, life cycle assessments? Oh, yeah, uh, hi. Okay, go ahead, <laughs> Thank you very much for the question. So I uh, answered uh, the question we asked, but yes, um, so we have desi designed uh, sugar can specific life cycle assessment that allows producers to understand and to know how to measure the GAG emissions, and it's included into the certification tools, notably the uh, uh, calculator. So through that process, uh, operators are able to measure or to estimate and to report the GAG emissions, and they have to meet the threshold set in the standards, so encouraging the continuous improvement into their achievements. And what we see uh, and we observe with the data we collect is a uh, uh, um, continuous reduction in the GAG footprint of certified producers over the years of continuous certification. So the, the strategy built on that will lead to increase our support to our members and to stakeholders who are looking to uh, work sustainably and produce sustainably in achieving uh, improvement uh, and continuing this trend. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, we have another question, uh, I think, uh, to Daniel. So do you anticipate an increase in membership fees in order to support this new strategy? Will you also be giving greater visibility and reporting on how current membership fees are spent? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, no, we, we've not set out, we, we anticipate to increase our membership fees to support the strategy. Our aim is to grow the number of members that we have um, to support the strategy and to increase the uptake of Bon Sucro credits where we do receive um, an income. Um, in terms of greater visibility and reporting on membership fee spending, so this year we published, I think possibly for the first time, um, a Bon Sucro annual report, which included a, um, a financial report, a summary financial report. Um, so Bon Sucro membership fees are spent, um, they go into the pot of money of, of unrestricted funding that we use to run Bon Sucro. Um, so that information is in that annual report. Happy to um, uh, signpost you to it on our on our website. Um, yeah. Thank you, Danielle. Um, thank you for your comment, Diane. So Diane commented that the strategy includes some ambitious goals for continuous improvement in environmental and social metrics based on percentages. They are ambitious indeed. And we're very excited. Uh, Raphael, thank you for your question. So uh, the question is, in terms of, oh, sorry, there we go. In, in terms of environmental targets and uh, objectives, uh, how did uh, Bon Sucro determine those targets and objectives? And what baseline did Bon Sucro use considering the disparity of data across the supply chains where uh, Bon Sucro has a footprint or where we operate? Okay. So in terms of the baseline data, I mean, um, so Nicholas and, and his team did lots of data crunching based on the certification data that we hold. Um, and those are global averages. So uh, the, the minimum, the payment of wages and so on and so forth, they're all, they're, they are all global average um, indicators, sorry, targets, baseline targets and baseline indicators and targets. Um, yeah, so the local, the lo differences, sort of any local differences or specificities within, within that have been averaged out. 
and because that is a what we've presented here is our global strategy and that's a global dashboard of selected indicators and we will be developing further uh, indicators for at the more local levels where relevant okay next question Thank you, Daniel. Uh, so, Sian Holt, uh, she's thanking you for the great presentation. Um, so, I think her question is specific about uh, purchasing or sourcing as a small or medium enterprise. So, she said she discussed with us about uh, the dif difficulties of small companies or smaller buyers to buy bone sucre certified material. Um, and, yeah, she, I think she wants to understand how this new strategy can support further uptake by uh, smaller companies. Okay, so I suggest, Sean, that maybe in your particular case, we could work with you to support like a supply chain mapping um, and help you understand where you're buying from. And then what we can typically do is we can then work to engage your suppliers if they're not able to source certified products um, and then if we know for example there's other buyers who are buying from those same sources we can then try and facilitate a kind of a joined up approach because if you're a small company I know you won't have much influence over those suppliers so um, I, the strategy doesn't address that in particular apart from I would say around the supply chain mapping but we can we can have a bilateral with you around that. Um, Definitely. Thank you, Daniel. Um, from uh, Diane Stevenson is asking, what about organizations that have uh, excellent baselines and are more difficult to improve? So I uh, understand this question as how we co how we promote continuous improvement for mm -hmm. organizations that are uh, performing well. Okay, that's a good point. So I suppose that relates to certification. I don't know if Nicola wants to answer that based on his knowledge of the new production standard that we'll be publishing in a couple of weeks, or at least the next draft, if that's been addressed with, um, with that, yeah. Nicola? Yeah, no, no, indeed. Um, so continuous improvement is, um, so is an objective as a strategic objective for the organization, but as well as part of the certification process of putting the draft of the standards we, we recognize that um, all operations start at different level, but even when you excel uh, in your baseline, you have always opportunities to find a way to always reflect and always do better. And you can see that with those for around GHG emissions, the continued decrease of the GHG emissions overall from the certified member. We might have thought that um, you know, the leading organization started to, to join Bonsuko at first, but even those leading organizations kept on reflecting how they can do better. And we believe by start, starting into the, the, the system uh, and engaging with Monsucro creates new, new, new interest and new improvement uh, into a guarantee or at least encouraging to always do better. So continuous improvement uh, touch everybody uh, and this is how we, uh, we aim to support continuously our, our membership and the stakeholders interested in sustainability. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, next question. Uh, you mentioned uh, strength, strengthening of third party social auditing. So the question is, how do we intend to, to do that to improve social auditing? Yeah. OK, so alongside the new um, production standard that we have in development. So I think in the, in the, in the draft, new draft production standard, there's strength and criteria around um, mapping stakeholders and relevant stakeholders to take into take into account during the assessment phase pre-certification. So you know where who are the most affected potential communities, have they been involved, what's their point of view and so on. So that comes in the new production standard and then that's supported by uh, an enha a revised certification protocol. So those are two policy frameworks. Um, in addition, we're going to be looking at um, new training for our accreditation providers, sorry, for our certific accredited certification providers. We're going to be looking at maybe some new partners that we can engage with to support how we do social, the social audit side better and, and build out our network. And we'll be also working with Accreditation Services International, who are the umbrella organization um, who accredit the certified certification bodies. Um, so there's quite a lot of work that we can do 
to evolve that sort of ecosystem around on the on the social audit side. Um, we haven't detailed it all out in the strategic plan yet. We've set out our ambitions, our aims, our priorities, and we've put that down clearly as a priority. Our roadmap to reach it is, is, will be developed in our operating plans. Um, and of course, we also work closely within the ICL community with the other um, sort of world leading standard systems in sustainability. And they have a working group on social auditing as well that we're part of. Uh, there was a more specific question uh, around that as well. Um, but I, I don't have an answer about uh, to that particular point. Apska. Yes, I think, uh, Raphael, uh, your question was very similar. So around social audience, and you, may, you mentioned the organization APSCA. Um, so yeah, I think this is part of those considerations that uh, Danielle was talking about. And it is definitely uh, something we will we, we'll consider as we improve it. So I'll, I'll go to your third question, Rafael. So the question was, can you please define further uh, the stepwise approach? And yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we've defined a little bit of the stepwise approach in our strategic plan, a sort of um, a pre-feasibility assessment. I don't know if Nicola wants to speak to that briefly now. I mean, we've not, but basically what we've done is we've, we've committed ourselves to working on the Bon Sucre approach, the Bon Sucre stepwise approach. So we're not going to sort of, you know, to buy one off the shelf, we're going to develop our own one. So, so that's what we've done in our plan. Once we've got the production standard revision sort of out of the way, then we can commit ourselves to working more deeply um, on the stepwise. I think that's probably all I can say about that for now, unless Nicola wants to, to add anything because he's going to be leading it for, for us. No, that's a um, perfect concept. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Nicola. Uh, okay, another question. So was there um, discussion on setting targets related to human rights issues like child labor and forced labor? Uh, how are we pushing for greater focus and standards in this area? Uh, it feels very vague at the moment. Okay, so our strategic plan, we haven't sort of repeated what's already in our standards. So we do have in the Bon Sucro standards, um, we uphold all the ILO conventions, including child child labour. So all of that is addressed in the Bon Sucre standard. And in the strategic plan, we've committed ourselves to working on um, the promotion of respecting human rights, in addition to whatever we have in the standard. So that will depend on, um, I suppose, what's, what, are, what the members and the stakeholders and the needs are in a particular origin. So for example, we have an ongoing we're developing at the moment um, a potential, we've got a project proposal that we're developing around um, migrant labor in a particular origin where we want to assess um, what's happening on the ground. Is there child labor in this particular area? What are the, what are the, what's the best, what's the practice of the, of the, um, of the sector in relation to working with migrant labor and ensuring there isn't child labor? Um, are they are they are they um, putting into practice um, responsible safe recruitment procedures? And once we've got that baseline information, then we can figure out right. Well, what's our plan of action? So we'll be doing that on a kind of case by case basis, depending on the particular risks in a particular origin. Um, and then the other the other targets are set within our our standard. Um, yeah. Thank you, Daniel. So I think this was the last question. The, please feel free to write your questions in the Q&A if, if you have any other questions. Okay, I don't think we have any further questions. Okay, we do. It's a Mexico specific question, um, which I don't have the answer to. And I would suggest, Hanan, that we have a webinar on Wednesday, I think, um, where we have quite a lot of Mexican members and stakeholders joining. So I can 
sort of if, if I may I can sort of move that question into that webinar and we can maybe address it there um, if that would be okay. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Hernan, for your question. So yeah, we have this Mexico specific webinar and we have Benjamin Sandoval in Mexico. He knows very well the, the context and uh, I'm sure, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be able to give you some insights from our experience. So with that, I think we are ready to close. So thank you again, everyone for attending. And yeah, as I said, we'll be sharing the slides and the recordings with you and really looking forward to working with you on this new strategy in the next, uh, in the next years. Thank Excellent. you very much. Yes, thank you, everybody.